Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to teach you three super useful knots. Um, great knots for not only around camp and when you're out in the woods doing things, but also in your everyday life. So is this video gonna be awesome? I'm afraid not. Get it, knots, I'm afraid, you got it. So my name is Dan Wowak, Yuko Brand Ambassador, and we're just gonna dive right into the whole knot making thing today. Um, now, there are tons of different knots out there. Literally like tons of knots. You could buy books and go online and just learn knots, I feel like, forever. But I have found that these three knots are knots that I turn to all the time, so that's why I wanted to share them with you. So, uh, like I said, let's just jump right into it. Knot number one, I don't know the name. Now, all kidding aside, I do know the name of this. It's called a bowline knot. But after teaching people from all over the country here at my school, there's a lot of argument around that. Bowline, bowlin, we're not sure how to say it. So we're just gonna go with bowline. Now, the bowline knot is a very great knot for the simple fact it is the loop on the end of a rope that doesn't slip. And I'm gonna show you how to tie that right now. Bowline knot is a very simple knot to tie. What we have here is our cut end and then we have the rest of our rope over here. So cut end on the right hand side to start this and then the rest of the rope on the left side. Um, you're gonna come in about a foot for this knot to start, okay? Now once you learn it, you can tie it anywhere on the line, but for now we're gonna come in about a foot and what you're going to do is you're going to make a loop just like that. About the size of a dime, not too big because it'll get you confused otherwise. So about the size of a dime and what you're also gonna notice is that the cut end right here okay, goes over, this line is over the rest of the line. So it's gonna look like that, very important, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cut end, okay? And we are going to go in the back side of the loop, just like this. Now, what's important when we do that, okay, is that we do not pull this all the way through. The loop that we're gonna create that doesn't slip is right here, okay? So if I needed this loop to be really big for some reason, I would just move this initial small dime size loop further down the rope and I have more on this side, okay? So remember what we're doing now is we're taking the cut end, we're going in the back side of the dime, okay? Once you come in the back side of the dime, only pull it a little bit, there's our loop starting to get created. Now, the line that's cut comes in the back side of the dime, out the front, it goes behind the rest of your rope and back in the dime. Okay, so that's what we're looking at right now. At this point, hold the cut end, hold the rest of the rope and give it a tug. That easily, we created a loop that doesn't slip. And that's it, the loop that does not slip. Now, application for this. Think about you're setting up a ridge line for a shelter. So now you can wrap this around a tree and pull your ridge line. It's a nice way to secure it that way. You can also tie this that if you have a roof rack on your car and you don't want this to bind down, not gonna happen. Again, anything you need a loop for, this loop is great. The nicest part of this whole thing though is once you tie it and you just grab this back section and lightly push it, it opens it, it breaks it free, and uh, you're not fighting a knot to get your line back. So, great little knot there to know. Now the second knot that I wanted to show is, it's a knot, but it's also a lash, and that is a straight lash. I think that I use this lash more than any other lashings. Now, you, it, you might not even know what that means. So, this right here, which just looks like a coil of rope on a stick, is a straight lash. Variety of different uses for this. Um, think about this. Tent pole, it cracks or breaks, and you're not sure what you're gonna do. You don't have tape, but you have a little bit of rope. Even a rake at home, the handle cracks. Something like that um, splitting out. We can use a straight lash to hold it back together. So very, very useful in that sense. Another way that you can use it, which I think everybody experienced this. You get a nice big piece of rope and the ends, they just, they look an absolute mess. Well, have no fear, straight lash to the rescue, right? We can use a straight lash to bind off the end. So even if this end gets worked and begins to fray, it's not gonna keep fraying. It's never gonna look like this now because we put this nice straight lash on there. So let me show you how easy and simple this is. 
Now for a straight lash, I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna tie this twice. I'm gonna first show you on a stick here so you understand what's happening and then we're gonna move to some smaller diameter rope um, to show you actually how, it, how it's finished off, okay? So to start this off, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your cut end and you're gonna follow that down about six to seven to eight inches and you are just gonna bend it. You're gonna make a loop like that. And then what you're going to do is you're gonna lay that against whatever object it is you're making your straight lash. So in our case, let's pretend this is a cracked tent pole. So we're just gonna lay it like this. So you can see cut end, long end, and our fold. Our long end then, okay, is going to begin wrapping over itself and the cut end back towards the fold. All right, so this will make more sense once I start to do it. So all I'm doing is wrapping it around just like this. So see how I'm wrapping the long end down towards the loop, okay? And the cut end is just hanging out there. So I'm gonna keep doing this, okay? Now, once I get down far enough, okay, and I come around, this would be the long end, okay? You'd have to pull all this if you had a lot of line. Otherwise, in my case, I only have a little bit. I'm gonna tuck that in the front of that loop we created, just like this, all right? Now at this point, you're gonna grab your other cut end and you're gonna give it a tug. What's gonna happen now is you can see that that loop that has this end in it is getting pulled up underneath the rest of that line. So as I pull that, it's getting pulled up inside there and it's starting to disappear, okay? That's what's gonna secure your knot. The tighter you wrap this, the harder you're gonna have to pull this, but the tighter it's gonna make this entire knot and it's gonna keep whatever it is from splitting out, not splitting out. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our smaller line, we're gonna fold it over on itself. So I made that loop again, okay? I'm gonna lay that on my rope, just like this. I'm gonna pinch it down, and then I'm gonna begin to wrap from my cut end down to the loop, okay? I'm gonna just wrap like this, nice and tight. Wrap it downward. Now, once I get down to the loop, I'm gonna take my other end, and I'm gonna place it in the loop, just like that, and I'm gonna pull that initial front end. That's going to tuck that line back up into the other line, underneath all the wraps. Okay, so now that's all hidden away. I can go and cut that free, and I have a straight lash keeping my rope from fraying. And there you go, straight lash, knot number two. Two knots for the arsenal. Knot number three. This is gonna seem a little bit technical, um, but just follow me, okay? Just follow along. If you remember these crazy, I'm gonna tell you the craziest steps. You're gonna think, what? This guy lost his mind. But honestly, if you remember these steps, because they're so crazy when I say them, you'll get this knot down. Now this is called a trucker's hitch. A trucker's hitch is a tensioning knot and it's used when you need to make a line really tight. This one is gonna get a little bit more complex, okay? Um, you're gonna need to use that first knot we looked at and that is the bowline knot. That is how we're gonna attach it to our first anchor point. Now I'm gonna go between trees, but again, think about this in all different aspects. If you need to tie something to the trunk of your car, you tie something down in a um, pickup bed truck, if you need to put a clothesline up at camp, any of that stuff, this is gonna work. So bowline knot is the first part. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that bowline knot, I'm gonna wrap it around a tree, and I'm gonna put all the line through the bowline knot, okay? And then, I'm gonna give it a little tug. So that's how we anchor this off. Now, all the magic's gonna happen at this end of the tree. Okay, so you find your second anchor point, take your line and wrap it around. Now, this is where people get into trouble all the time. They don't know what to do here. So they try to tie a knot and, and no matter what they do, that rope is loose. And we're gonna fix all that. So we, we pull that rope around our anchor point. And what I want you to do is I want you to be cool because you're gonna tie a cool knot. Now remember, I'm gonna say all these crazy things and I need you to let them sink in. Be cool, gonna tie a knot. You're gonna reach out like this. 
you're gonna reach out and wherever you grab the line is where you're gonna tie your trucker's hitch. Okay, now I identified where I need my trucker's hitch to be tied. So this is what's gonna happen. It all pretty much starts one-handed. I am gonna, first of all, be comfortable. So being comfortable with my hand that's holding the line um, is like this. I can also be comfortable like this but I'm uncomfortable if I turn my hand like this. So it's important to be uncomfortable, okay? When we're using this for a shelter, I tell people, hey, you don't have a shelter up, you're uncomfortable. So my hand like this is uncomfortable. Again, if your palm's up, palm's down, you're comfortable. But when you turn your whole arm like this and put your palm up, super uncomfortable, okay? That's how we're gonna start. Now, from that point, you're gonna grab with just four fingers. You're gonna grab the line, you're gonna make yourself comfortable. See, I'm giving myself a thumbs up. Yeah, it's awesome, right? So my thumb wasn't involved at all um, in that um, little spinny move. So I'm uncomfortable, thumbs up, I'm comfortable, okay? Now, when I open my hand up, just like this, what happens is I can stick my thumb through the line and there's only one thing I can grab and that is the proper side of the rope. So again, I'm uncomfortable. Hey, this is cool, I'm setting up a, a nice knot. I open up my hand, stick my thumb through, grab the line, and pull it to my second anchor point. What that did now was created a loop. Now, with this loop, I'm gonna put all that extra line through it, and I'm gonna pull it yet again back towards the second anchor point. Now, what you're gonna notice here when I do this is that I have a loop, okay, with a line through it, and I could pull this thing super hard, and the more I pull it, the more tension in my line is created. And that's how we're gonna create the tension. The confusing part now for people is how do I actually tie this off? But it's actually not too confusing. It's pretty simple. So where my line comes through that loop, okay, this right here, all I'm gonna do is pull it tight, take two fingers, and I'm gonna pinch it. So the loop's here, the two lines are here, I'm gonna pinch that, and I'm gonna take all of my line, that whole bunch, I'm gonna throw it over all the lines. Now what that's gonna do is that's going to create what I like to say is a number four. So here you can see my crazy looking number four, okay? Easy, easy stuff. At this point, I'm gonna reach through the number four. Now remember, I'm pulling this tight, I'm pinching, I create this number four. So here's my number four, just right there. I'm gonna reach through the number four all the way through to grab that other line and I'm gonna pinch it with a death grip and all I'm gonna do is pull it and pull it and pull it and pull it. Now as I pull that it binds up against my loop and now my knot is in place. Alright now you can see that line is super tight for a big thick rope like this with a really long stretch where it's stretched out about 20 foot here super tight so this trucker's hitch is a great one this can pull and tighten things down like you can imagine again in a uh, outdoor environment what's really nice with this number one clothesline number two um, this is great for setting up and then tying a tarp off too so if you want to get involved with tarp shelters this is your go-to and there you go my friends three useful knots the bowline knot the straight lash and the trucker's hitch Great knots to know, share with your friends, and have a good time with them. And they're gonna make your life that much simpler. So thanks for joining us on this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, blog, all the good stuff over at ukogear.com. And until next video, stay lit.